We are live. What's up everyone? Hey guys, welcome to our tour of Jolene. We thought we'd jump on here and make an update to our van video. We've owned Jolene for three years now and a lot has changed. She is still the pride and joy of our life. We have vowed we will never get rid of Jolene. Next week we're going to be releasing five things that we would have changed with our van. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. So the biggest thing that has changed since our last video is the fact that we're not living in the van anymore. Right now we're full-time RVers and we just use the van for weekend getaway trips. We got all of our outdoor gear in here and when it comes to the weekend we just throw some clothes in here and start driving and we don't have to worry about forgetting anything. So it works out great. So hop up in here and I'll give you a tour. Oh wait, before we get started, I have to talk about the number one thing that I upgraded in the van. I think all vans should have this because it's just the best thing ever. All right, listen. Oh no. <laughs> As I mentioned, it's the best upgrade to our van. No, it's not. <laughs> So now that you saw the best upgrade that we did to Jolene, let's get started on the interior. So up here we used to be our pantry for all of our food and stuff. Now we just keep our sleeping pads, small backpacks, other hiking supplies. Down here in the Hey, babe, you forgot to tell them about my curtains. Oh yeah. Yeah, we got some curtains here. Hey, those are high quality. I did a good job sewing those babies up. Yep. Another thing that we added is a battery tender, and I just have that, the plug, sticking out of the bottom of the van. So I can just grab an extension cord, plug into some outlet somewhere, and then I'll always have the battery be just topping off. So that's been super helpful. Uh, the fridge has definitely stood the test of time for sure. It's just a mini fridge that we got from Target. Some people said that having a normal fridge, uh, it wouldn't last inside of an RV because all the bumps and stuff. And we drove to Alaska, which was about as bumpy as a road as you can get. And this thing still runs fine. And constantly turning it on and off. So we turn it on for the weekends, turn it off throughout the week, and then turn it back on for the next weekend whenever we need food to stay cold. And it's still kicking, so no complaints with the fridge. Good girl. Alright. <laughs> there he is. He got scared. He's gonna bite ya. <laughs> Hi, little fella. Then over here in the water compartment. Um, now we just have one tank. Used to have two. This one just has the water in it, and then the other tank I used to have, it would be catching all of the water after it went through, after we used it, basically. So, gray water. Um, I got rid of that, drilled a hole in the floorboard. Now I have just a PVC pipe just going from the sink drain <laughs> down to the, through the floorboard and out into the ground. If we're in a location it's illegal for me to do that, I'll put a bucket underneath and catch all of our water. But honestly, I don't have anything crazy coming out of our sink. It's just uh, toothpaste and washing our hands every once in a while. So um, I did have, we just have one electrical water pump. And I used to have the switch for that pump way over here. So you'd have to reach over here and then come back over here, wash your hands. Then come back over here, turn it off. Now I move the switch over here, so now it's super accessible for the uh, water there. A uh, five gallon plastic bucket for the sink, still uh, one of my favorite things about this van. <laughs> a free sink when it could have cost us probably a hundred bucks from Amazon or some RV dealer or whatever. Uh, from there, as I said, we keep all of our outdoor equipment in here, including our bikes. Uh, I found the best way to store the bikes upright and in a way where we can store them very practical manner and easy to get in and out is just using these hooks that I got from Walmart and just drilled them into the, the bed and then it's just holding, I just have the bike sitting there on there 
holding the handlebars and it holds it upright it holds it on bumpy roads and everything and I mean we got four bikes here now and still plenty of room in the middle to uh, load our kayak or whatever else we need to put in here pretty happy with that and another addition fire extinguisher uh, we didn't have that for the whole time that we lived in it thankfully we didn't have a issue with that <laughs> Uh, from here, we just have a little compartment where we store stuff. Now I just have a little uh, one by one piece of wood that I put there to prop it up. So now I can dig into wherever I need to get my stuff and then um, it makes it a lot easier to access. And that is everything in the kitchen. Let's check out the garage. All right, we got a nice hornet here. He's Tuning in for the live performance. He will not leave us alone at all. All right, welcome to our garage. This is where we keep all of our toys and this is why we love Jolene so much. We never have to worry about anything back here getting stolen when we stop for food or stay somewhere overnight. So here is our two mountain bikes. Like Brandon has already mentioned, he created these really cool clasps. So much cheaper than the alternative. And then my bike is 27 and a half inches and his is 29 inches. So we have to take off our front tire in order to store them in here, but no problem because we just store them right up here on the side. And then we have these very nice, expensive luxury storage units down here. We just use the hole in the van and that works out really conveniently. And over here we have our road bikes. Brandon does have to take his tire off. I don't have to, which is really nice but we love to ride Tanglefoot Trail, if anyone knows where that is. It is a very beautiful trail with, near where we live. Let's move on to talk about the bed. I love how the bed turned out. My husband is so creative and handy when it comes to building stuff out like this. Like I said, we built 100% of this van ourselves. What is really nice about the bed is we got pretty much all the wood from a dumpster, a scrap dumpster in Arizona, so that kept the cost extremely low. But Brandon did do a really good job be being creative. And on each side of the bed, there are four different heights. And we can bring the bed up and down. So there's four different heights. It's sitting up here because we do live in an RV, so we have very limited garage space. So we keep our bikes in here at all times. And then on the weekends, if we decide to go somewhere and go biking, we just go ahead and sleep up there. It's a little crammed, so I hope you're not claustrophobic. As far as the lengthwise, my husband is 5'10". He did have to cut two divots out on the side of the van to be able to fit comfortably. I'm 5'4". I don't have an issue laying all the way down. We are super cheap, so it ended up just being a very nice piece that Brandon added. Another cheap thing about the van is we did buy it for 24,000. And so we basically saved 12,000. We bought it the year it came out, which was 2017 but there is substantial damage on both sides of the roof um, back there. And that is because the guy that had owned it, he owned some sign business and one of his employees had backed it into basically a roof. It was definitely heavy damage, but my handy husband went ahead and repaired the holes and sealed it up so that we didn't have any water damage. And this is another very handy piece of my husband's handiwork. And this is now our bike rack. It's very simple, you just go ahead and put this in there like that and then you take a bike out set it on there and then you can work on it or whatever we need to do when we're out on the trail <laughs> overall I just love how this van turned out we did do it all ourselves like I've already mentioned and so don't let it scare you if you're wanting to do the same get creative like I said we found wood in the dumpster we just pretty much scrapped together. Oh yeah, I didn't even talk about my super nice curtains in the back. Um, these are not super nice, but they do work. And so yeah, I sewed all the pieces uh, from the curtains and we really just looked for ways to make it affordable, but still very usable. And we did exactly that. Okay, so our camera battery just died, but we're gonna wrap this thing up. All right, funniest story. <laughs> I would say the countless times that I punch on the ice cream music oh my as gosh. I'm driving through town. You guys. Uh, people's looks <laughs> of terror are just the best thing ever. 30 bucks on eBay, totally worth it. Highly no. recommend it. It's Everyone's so fault. embarrassing because I don't even have ice cream to give to the kids. I'm like actually scared that kids are going to come flocking. You know how excited you get when there's ice cream? But oh my gosh. Okay, let's see. Funny story for me. Oh, 
probably not funniest, but I would say coolest story in the van. We picked a hitchhiker up in Alaska and we drove him all the way back down to basically the U.S. border. Yeah. And that was so fun. So we were with him for 18 hours. It was just really cool. So we don't even have a seat back here. I was like, I pulled over on the side of the road. I was like, hey man, hop in, but we don't have a seat for you. We only have an REI chair. And we got pulled over. And I got pulled over. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, close the curtain. Holy crap. We were freaking out a little bit because he's sitting back here in an REI chair and we just had this curtain closed and it just hoping the police did not ask us to look back there. Thankfully, he didn't, and we were in Canada too. And the guy was like, "Oh no, you're, you know, I just put on my nicest face." And I was like, "I'm so sorry, sir. I didn't know I was speeding." Yeah. And he let me go. Thank God. But yeah, thankfully, so thankfully she was driving. <laughs> if I was driving, we would have been strip, strip searched for sure. <laughs> yeah, but... empty the van, contents everywhere on the highway. Oh my god! Show gosh. me what's going on in here. Yeah, guy with the mustache driving a windowless van. This can't be good. Playing ice cream music. Just imagine <laughs> my life all the time. But yeah, that was probably the coolest story. And this guy was so awesome. I just feel like I've, we've learned so much from all the tra traveling we've done. It's been so cool. But anyways, since our camera died, we better sign off and wrap this thing up. So thanks for tuning in. Um, hopefully you guys learned something from us. All right. Bye, guys. See ya. Thank you.